Okay, dude, are you ready? He's offloaded. So. We're gonna start jamming, dude, like no other, man. So. Is that what we're doing today, bro? I thought we were building hot dogs, roasters, and s'more roasters over the fireplaces today. Mm, bro, are you awake and ready, dude? Because you don't look awake, dude. It looks <laughs> like you just got your butt chewed by so somebody. we're not doing the roasters today? No. I wanted s'mores, dude. You idiot. <laughs> Guys, we've been here for about six and a half months now, and one of my biggest pet peeves is working in an area that is unorganized. And I've been working in under unorganization for so long, and it's just literally pissed me off to the point where I can't get anything done. So even though we've got a huge workload, we have three or four jobs going in the other shop, one going over here in this shop, I gotta get some organization done. So. I'm just going to give you a few tips and pointers today of kind of how we organize. You got to remember, we're woodworkers, we're carpenters. Sometimes you walk into some dude's shop and you've got cabinets on the walls and everything's hidden behind doors. And you know what? I admire that and I think it's so cool. But that's not us. I've got to see things on the wall. I've got to know where things are. I've got to be organized. If somebody takes something, I got to have them put it back in the right spot. Everything's got to have a spot. So today we're just going to kind of go over a few um, tips and tricks on how we organize and still run a business. You got to remember we've got about 10, 11 employees here and uh, everybody needs to know where things are. They need to know where the oil for the truck is. Uh, they need to know where the lube for the bandsaw and the bandsaw for that bandsaw is. You know, so um, I'll kind of show you what we do and we'll go from there. Stay tuned. So I've got a ton of this kind of stuff, guys. Little boxes full of router bits and these are my shaper bits. And if they're in a bucket underneath my CNC or my flattener or my computer desk or wherever, then I forget about them. I don't know about how you guys are, so I need to see it. I'm a visual guy. So we're gonna build a little, I've got little room up above that window and we're gonna build a little, just a quick and easy. I know a lot of guys get fancy with the routers and it's not that we can't do that. It's just that sometimes I'm more of a, hey, time is money, we gotta make money. So it's gonna look good. I've got some old timber frame material that we've uh, milled, uh, left over from bigger pieces. And so we're gonna use a lot of that stuff. And so we're gonna take you through how we're gonna organize this bucket, and then on to some more. Okay, here's your pro tip. You're laying out your top and your bottom of this shelf system. And so if I'm gonna have four equal spaces, first of all, I need to measure the width of my shelf, which is seven eighths. So I take this seven eighths And I got 41, so inside to out, I go 41. And then you take your trusty calculator. 41 divided by, I want four spaces, four. So that's 10 and a quarter. And you hook in that same spot, 10 and a quarter. Ten and a quarter. 
10 and a quarter. I always X so I know which side I'm connecting to. So now if I had more time or if I was more of the cabinet nature, I would probably do a dado or a mortise here um, for my shelves to come in a notch. And usually I do have that tool set up, but we're, like I said, we're just kind of trying to get things on the walls and organized and who knows in the year, maybe I'll come back and redo them and do them fancy. But for right now, this is a good way Especially for most of you that don't maybe have those fancy tools, just to know that there is an optional, there is another option to uh, to have some cool shelves in your shop, you know. Technically, you should always have a push block. So your hand doesn't get too close to the blade. Okay, I got a pilot hole. Uh, I think it's a 3 16 bit. So you want it a little bigger than your screw. Um, and notice I'm just going into the top, the top board, not my other board. Not my upright board. So I'm going to do just two holes. Notice how I've got a junk board underneath, so it doesn't matter if I'm drilling through it. So guys, we're just using a tight bond glue, uh, wood glue, and uh, you don't have to use the glue. I mean, I'm using glue and screws and nobody's using screws either. They're probably just using finish nails for what this application is. But when we build stuff, I like to be able to park a truck on top of it and not have it break. So here we go. Uh, just a bead of glue here. And then it's however you feel most comfortable with your working station here. I like everything up off the ground where I can reach it. And then you move it to your line so you can see that line that we marked. And like I said, if you took the time to do a router dado or a uh, just a regular dado with the with the table saw, then this is going to speed speed your process up. But this is how we're doing it today. Okay, then I'm gonna do this last side. A little bead of glue. It's kind of like insurance. The glue's kind of like the insurance. Do you need it in every application? No, not necessarily. But is it good to have and does it make you feel warm and fuzzy at night? Yes, yes. So I like to do glue as well. It's uh, 
It's kind of over the top in this application, obviously, especially when you see what we're putting on this, but I like to do the glue, especially if your wood cracks. But in this case, we're not gonna crack any wood. I'm not gonna crack any wood. Get them lined up with your lines. Love it when a plan comes together. Now this is a little thicker piece, uh, two inches by three inches. <laughs> Not everybody's gonna work with material like this. I understand, but since we're timber framers, I get a lot of this kind of stuff laying around and we love using it. So this is gonna be kind of just like the ledger underneath the shelf. Um, and we're gonna put dowels, dowels, pegs. Once again, with the timber framing lingo, we're gonna put the dowels in to hold like uh, our rolls of tape and different things and I'll show you in a sec. and craft day here. <laughs> These guys are timber framers? What are they doing using screws? The uh, Makita drill also doubles for a good hammer. So if you uh, are using it and you need to bump a board or bump something, that's great. It's perfect. It works. So what we've just done here is we've simplified an organization system. Um, not much to look at, but due to the beauty of the fur, the rough sound fur, I think it looks pretty good. Throw a little bit of stain on it, dude, and you'd have something real nice. So we're gonna hang this above the window now. Like I said, this is the bottom. Then we're gonna put our dowels here and hang some different things there. Um, but yeah, I'll show you. We're gonna screw it right above the window. Now in most garages or houses, remember, right above the windows, you should have a header to be able to screw into. That's a safe zone to put screws in. And right along the sides of the windows, you should have studs as well. Same goes for doors. Sometimes though, they put the headers all the way up at the top, towards the top of the wall. So just check that when you're drilling in. I know my header is right above the window here. And we haven't even gotten to the cool stuff, you know? Now I know where all my tape is. And I've got videos in here, so if somebody comes in and grabs a roll of tape, they better be putting it back or else. Here's a tip. The label is on this side of the box, but I don't want to put that side of the box up on the shelf. so. If you can't pull the label off and re-stick it, write down with a Sharpie what you want on the end of that box so you can see. So when you put it up there, you know that that is the three quarter inch for a three quarter inch bore uh, shaper cutter. Look inside the box if you need to know the profile, but quick helps.
What I did with all this, we haven't cleaned out a box since we've moved, made the big move, and we found all this electrical stuff. So if we ever need electrical, if we build another shop down the road. So I put all the 220 plugs in here. All your outlets and your outlet covers are all together. You got your plugs for your cords, and then these are your junction boxes for your outlets and the grommets. And they're all going to be, they're all labeled, and they're going to be designated to a corner up there. So we'll put those up there, and that way it's all labeled so everybody can see what's in the box, and there you have it. If you have a garage with two doors like this and you got the little space in between the doors you don't know what to do with, well, here's a good example of something you can do. We've got all our fluids for our maintenance, for our diesel trucks, for our forklifts, backhoes, right here. So mechanic-wise, if we need it, it's right here. It's a good way to store that. It consolidates it and you can see it. And then same thing, we just put this one up. We're doing the same thing over here. Uh, they're not full, but we're gonna organize them same way. This is our Powermatic, our 18 inch bandsaw. And technically what I like to do, everything that is needed to maintain this tool, be close to the tool, but also needs to be organized. So um, behind me, I'm putting different things uh, to lube the pulleys and the and the Titan uh, uh, wrenches, the Allen wrenches and stuff. So I know that that stuff is there. But also the extra blades. If you notice right above me, we have got a six by six post in the middle of our garage, which yeah I know is stupid, but it's there. And uh, so we've turned it into a piece that we can organize things to. And I've drilled a three quarter inch hole and used a three quarter inch dowel, oak dowel, and put that in there. Now I can hang my blades that go to this saw. They're right there. Oh, well, I've got my track for my track saw that's on the other side of the post. So just things that, you know, you know where they are, um, you know how to get to them and when to get to them and where they go when you're done with the work. So we love it, we love it, we're happy. What happens when you send somebody to look for something they can't find it? Or you have to go look for something and you can't find it? Uh, when I have to go find it because somebody else can't find it, that's really irritating to me because I gotta stop what I'm doing and go to help them figure out where the item set is. Um, but how much time does it kill? It kills a ton of time. Time is money! Yeah, so. And then how good of a mood are you in, dude? Um, it makes me pretty grumpy, pretty grumpy, so it kind of lowers the mood for everyone else when somebody's been searching for something for 10 or 15 minutes and I have to go figure out where it's at, and then it takes me five minutes to find it, or even a minute, so. so bo yeah, bottom line is, the more organized we can be, it is, it is a money maker, it's a money saver, so. That's why we're trying to be organized. That is the point of organization in a shop like this. This is just kind of the our start of our process here. We've got all our tools and whatnot, and you know, we always gotta start somewhere, get more organized, and get, get cleaned up. But eventually, we'll be able to have a spot for everyone's tools, keep things organized, know where everything's at, so we'll be able to work more efficiently and get more things done on a timely manner. So you can see why organization is so important in your shop, garage, house, whatever. If you can't find something that you need and you know you have it, you're gonna end up going to the store and buying it again or spending a lot of time trying to look for it. So, take it from us, the BC Timber Crew. Get organized, get your stuff in order, get it up on the wall and visualize it however it works for you. Get it organized because that's gonna save you a lot of time and in business, time is money. Hey, what
have been a lot of bleeping, you know. Beep, beep, beep. We didn't know Tommy had a bad mouth until today, right, dude? Somebody, one of the employees pushed him over the edge and he went, dude, local on him. So we're all gonna be a little nicer to Tommy. And don't get me don't get me wrong, we love Tommy, but you know, Tommy's fun to have fun with, right, dude? Hey, I'm all I'm all for joking and laughter. You can make fun of me. Tommy's the grand the way you do it. Tommy's the grandpa of the crew, he keeps us all in check. <laughs> and he keeps us out. He ain't my age, dude. He's old enough to be my dad. So anyway. <laughs>